How's it going, guys? This is the Board Certified Gaming Podcast, the video game podcast that needs no introduction, even though that's technically what I'm doing right now, giving it an introduction, which actually ends up contradicting the whole entire doesn't need an introduction statement and kind of makes it redundant, stupid, and I don't know why that's a phrase. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Andy. Amar is across from me, as always. Hello. He needs an introduction. Do I? I don't know. Do you do you need an introduction? I don't think so. Amar doesn't need an introduction. I could honestly just sit here and just be silent the whole time. And there you go. Okay. So, July 2nd was a few days ago, and it marked the exact middle point of the year 2020. We're halfway done with this awful garbage year. Oh, yeah. Isn't that like July 2nd is like exactly That's like the, the middle, middle day? Yep. So, the second half of 2020 hopefully gets better. I don't have any faith that that'll happen. Nope. So with the year being half over, it kind of got me thinking about the second halves of video games. I know that's a jump, but this is a video game podcast, so bear with me. This is what we do. That's, we have to come up with stuff. So namely the fact that people don't really reach the second half of video games nowadays. I mean, these games are huge. They're getting bigger, and longer, just like us. Let your mind you take that. Fat? Let your mind take that wherever you want to take it. We don't have the problem of getting too big and too long. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> but have games gone too far? Have they, with all the advances in technology, are they getting too big? Are they getting too in-depth, too long? Is there too much stuff to do that it's impossible to finish in this day and age? Is it the game's fault? Is it our fault as society? Is it a mixture of both? What is it? On this episode, we're going to dive into the length and depth of the modern AAA title and see if there are any you know, issues that stick out to us. We're going to start off with a quote from a former gaming exec. We're going to discuss some numbers. We're also going to defend longer games a little bit by taking, by talking about some other reasons why people aren't finishing their games, kind of taking that into perspective, kind of understanding, yes, games are getting longer, but it's not always their fault that people don't finish them. And then at the end, we're probably going to sum up with some personal thoughts. It's actually going to be quite kind of funny because this might be a little shorter than our normal episode. And it's about if games are that long. I don't know. I think that's funny. Before we get into that, check out our Twitter at BCG podcast. Go check it out. It's fun. Hit the follow button. That would be cool. Even if you're a Russian bot that wants me to see your sexy pictures, hit follow. That'd be cool. You know, check us out on Twitter at BCG podcast. Also, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, click the picture of our podcast, scroll all the way to the bottom, hit the five stars, leave a review as well if you want, because that would be awesome. You'd let us know that we're doing a good job. Even if the review says we suck, that's fine. I'll try to we'll find take it. I'll try to find some way to spin that in as a positive. You're right, I do suck. I I don't have one right now. That's pretty tough. But say something nice. Take, take the week to think about yeah, it. Yeah, give me some time. Say something nice. So go to Apple Podcasts, leave a review, give us five stars. Even if you think our show is bad, consider it five stars out of 100. So just click that five. That'd be nice. And check our Instagram at Board Certified Gaming Podcast. There's pictures. We post the thumbnails and other memes and stuff on there. It's pretty cool. So we're going to get into it now. We're going to start with a quote well, a couple quotes from the ex Sony CEO, Sean Layden, the guy who was always on E3 press or those Sony I don't know, press conferences. They're not really called that. They're called presentations or whatever you want to call them. The entire Sony event. He's kind of the ringleader. He's kind of the guy in the middle like, hey, we have some things here for you at Sony that we're really excited about. That guy always wore a suit. Looked kind of nice. But he did an interview with Games Beat about The Last of Us Part Two because that is a big title, probably one of the biggest that came out recently. We didn't play it. I didn't buy it. I don't care. It's all right. I guess I've heard. I've also heard that people are getting mad that a girl is buff, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. Well, you know, muscles work the same regardless of gender, so yeah, you lift enough. You you're Strong women are dope. Pretty fucking jacked. Yeah. So he did an interview about Last of Us Part Two. He left Sony in October, 
But this was kind of the last game that was made mostly under his watch. He was like, you know what? I was paying attention the whole time. I was talking to them because this game took a long time to make. And he only left a couple months ago. So it's he still had his fingers in Last of Us Part Two, And he chose this interview to kind of talk about how it's they're doing something at Naughty Dog that's not really sustainable or realistic or like you shouldn't make this your prime model for making games. He kind of is talking about how the current model of AAA production, it's not really sustainable. So The Last of Us 1 took roughly 15 hours to complete just to beat the game. Roughly. I mean, if you took forever or stunk at it, probably took 20. But 15 hours is probably your average play time. And it took three and a half years to make it. Last of Us 2, Last of Us Part 2, takes about 25 hours to beat it completely, start to finish. It took six years to make. So basically, double the time to, that it takes to play the game, double the t- almost double the time it takes to make the game. And their budget is you know, probably astronomical for the second game. Yeah. For the big one, it was probably big. The first one is probably big. The second one is probably even bigger, just because six years, you got to pay your staff, you got to pay all the animators, you got to have the high-tech technology, you got to have all this other stuff. I just realized high-tech technology is redundant. HTT. HTT. So he kind of talked he kind of talked about, you know, hey, these games are getting huge now. He agrees. He's saying games are getting too big, they're taking too long, they cost way too much money, which at a point for some, yeah. At a point it comes to, hey, we need to make money on this. We can't as much as us as gamers would like to have, hey, we're just here to make a game. We don't care if we make money. We just want to make the best game possible and then just you guys just have it. That's not how it works. These game companies and the publishers are greedy businessmen and women. So EA, they kind of care about where their money comes from and how much of it they're getting. So do these other publishers and game devs because the more money you make, the more stuff you can do, the more risks you can take, the more games you can make, and then the more money you can make because that's just what everybody exists to do and that's make a bunch of money and make use that money to make more money. So... He says there's a lot of games out there that have $150 million budgets, take five years to make. Think of like Last of Us, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, all like these big games that just pride themselves on being huge. Being right. oh, Grand Theft Auto, all these other games that are like. Yeah, we're we going have, in almost a decade. Yeah. Like we're two, three years away from a full decade of no new Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah. Which imagine how long, how big Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to be be huge the budget is going to be gigantic i think the budget that somebody came out with was like fucking it's probably gonna be like 600 million I something like say. that they're gonna make it back most likely oh, easily. because they're gonna just milk another 10 years out of it and then they're they basically financed it with grand theft auto 5 yeah that's just how or yeah mostly grand theft auto 5 that's how they financed it so he's goes on to say with new consoles and New technology coming, especially holiday season, coming up pretty quickly. You can't just raise the numbers of budget and how long it takes and then just hope to grow as a company, to hope to sustain growth. You're going to peak. You're going to flatline at some point. You're going to plateau. So he's quoted by saying, it's hard for every adventure game to shoot for the 50 to 60 hour gameplay milestone because that's going to be so much more expensive to achieve. And in the end, you may close some interesting creators and their stories out of the market if that's the kind of threshold they have to meet. We have to reevaluate that. That's true. I mean, think of all these smaller studios that have to compete with these giant games that can't fit it. They're like, I can only make like an eight, 10 hour game. I'm sorry. That's all we have the budget for. We're not huge. We are using this game to make us some money so we can make bigger games in the future. All of these, Bethesda was a smaller studio that made just big games and made a lot of money. And then they're like, all right, we took a shot. Turns out we have a lot of money now. We can afford to make bigger and bigger games. Right. Rockstar lives their life on making gigantic ass games because the last gigantic ass game basically paid for the new one. That's how it works. And if you buy, people don't buy the small indie games because they're like, "Eh, I'm only going to get like eight hours of it. 
people but don't some care. people do. Some yeah. people do. And we appreciate those that do buy indie titles, regardless of how long they are. But I mean, that is a good point to bring up because it's like, I mean, if every single game, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like a long game. Yeah. But I also have the attention span to maintain a long game. I'm also very picky about the games that I play. Yeah. I'll spend 50, 60 hours on an RPG, but I'm not going to spend 50, 60 on all of them. If I get bored, I get bored. Yeah. You know, imagine if I don't see it's worth going on. I'm probably going to like, you know what? I, well, there are some, things. yeah, there, I mean, there are some games where like the story should only be as long as, Hey, it's going to take me a weekend to finish it. Yeah. You know, like call of duty when they do a story mode, I don't want to play a 40 hour call. of Duty yeah, campaign. That, I have no interest in doing that at all. Yeah. The replayability of the multiplayer makes up for the fact that the campaign is probably short. It's probably who cares. It's probably, I can get it done, get the achievements or whatever. Most people haven't weekend. given a shit about the call of duty campaign since the modern warfare days. Black like, ops four. The they didn't even have one. One. they were like we're not even making and one. it was we don't fine it's still sold and people didn't really miss it they were yeah, like, they're sure. like fuck it we're just playing blackout and yeah. multiplayer which to preface all of this we understand that multiplayer games games that are not really story based like puzzle games or whatever multiplayer battle royales fps's we get that those games they're not meant to have like an end they're not meant to be like hey complete this game they all are also have some kind of means of making money after the fact. There are games that the free to play games, they probably cost a lot to make or not. They're also a lot to maintain. They are a lot to maintain. Haven't but, had servers, but they make them back with all the constant stuff updates, that's in yeah. it. Microtransactions, updates. yeah. That is that throws a wrench in this because yes, games as they are, if you are just banking on people paying sixty, sometimes now seventy dollars for a game, that to finance your games yeah okay but also there are people kind of bucking that trend and saying well we have free-to-play games and we make money off of microtransactions you got epic games making billions of dollars a year so it's like yes we understand that there are outliers but this is like your triple a average titles that you need to go buy that it's not free to play it's we are charging 60 dollars and the problem is as these budgets grow as technology advances as people expectations change we're expecting the next Grand Theft Auto to be huge, to be bigger, to be more stuff that we can do than ever before, to be this marvel of technology of all the computing power we now have in our consoles, to be like, hey, make the biggest game you possibly can. And they're taking a long time to do it because they have to. Elder Scrolls 6. They, that's yeah, gonna be Elder Scrolls 6. One. They can't make these games in like two years. They can't. So as these budgets grow... As these this time passes, I mean they can. I, <clears throat> they can. I just think we got spoiled. Yeah, we we are. We That's are super spoiled. We think it's like okay, you can just shit these out, no problem, and make you know bestsellers. It's like from Borderlands two to three was how many fucking years? Yeah, and that's Borderlands three is just a f nicer looking Borderlands two. I know it's, being it's the same kind it's of game. It's but. the same kind of model, but it's still. Even that, it takes a long time to make because you got to be do all the writing, you got to do all the animating, you got to think of every single possible thing that people can do so they're not bored. So they get to the end. These game developers are making these games saying, well, this is going to be as interesting starting it to get into the finish line, which is we want everybody to do, but people aren't doing it because either it's too much, too long, they don't care, it's not hooking them enough. So these $150, $180 million budgets Yes, they get the game console, they, the game discs that people are buying. They're buying the copies. But if a game like Call of Duty doesn't hook you, that's it. You don't buy the microtransactions. You don't pay for the battle, battle passes. Pass you don't whatever, pay for yeah. anything like that. And then it's you're just, just stuck on that $60 earned from that game. And you don't even, we have a previous episode about this. The game developers don't even get all of that $60. So the problem with these budgets growing, with these games getting bigger and bigger, is that the same $60 cost doesn't really make up for it now that, okay, well, the number, this goalpost is moving back, but the kicker is still the same strength of foot. So it won't go as far. That's just how it works. So he's basically realizing that. And yes, now the games are going to go to $70, which is a topic in and of itself. That's just going to come with the it's increase kind of, of technology. Movie. But that's the point is that these games developers have to be like, all right, let's do 70 Yes, people are going to think it sucks. They're still going to buy our games because but they want to play it. I mean, realistically, of course, I'm not thrilled about it if that becomes the new norm. But I mean, 60 was the new norm back in the day, and we all got used years to it. Ago. Yeah. We're talking about a $10 increase that 
happened it took 15 years to happen yeah over time games were always 60 dollars, but the budgets kept growing and growing and growing yeah you know you paid the same 60 dollars for gta 4 that you did for gta 5 and those are two radically different games yeah you paid the same 60 dollars for elder scrolls oblivion that you paid for elder Scrolls skyrim seven times think about how massive skyrim is in comparison to oblivion yeah you know i mean in in theory there is now a game like nba 2k it's like yes i love my sports games don't get me wrong but i mean at what fucking point do you just go on a free-to-play model and then just do update the players have a fucking battle pass or something like that i mean people play enough my team that that can just be its own fucking mode because they people buy them if you want an updated roster because in a previous episode we mentioned as well they have the licenses nobody else can make them so they're like we can charge whatever because feel like if people so want to play football money. when it's the off season, they got to buy Madden. If they want to play basketball when it's the off season, they got to buy 2K. That's just how it I works. I feel like you could just make so much more fucking money. Yes. Just here, pay they 20 sh- bucks for the updated roster. They should 100%. Percent a just there is going to be a threshold where technology has advanced only so far where we can't make any more significant developments in these sports games or in any game period. There's We're going to be that a threshold. We are where there's like the limitations are running out. These new consoles, they're going to have. All we're talking about this next console generation speed. is speed and ray tracing. Yeah. Like, Which, remember that big jump from the PS2 to the PS3 and the original Xbox to the 360, that massive gap? Yeah. And then games got better and better and better. And then when the PS4 now and Xbox One came out, it was just kind of like, this is yeah. okay. We got rid of loading screens, but your games still kind of look the same that they did before. Yeah, also, we, we've already hit that yeah. threshold because we went kind of too far too fast it's it's gone that's and that's the whole point of this we're going way too far way too fast we're doing too much that it's not really worth it it's not really making these companies money back so they have to be like all right games are 70 dollars now sorry you guys are gonna if you want your sports game if you want this new title that's coming out you got to pay for it and that's what that's what sean Layden is talking about he's like you know what this doesn't work you can't just assume that this is a upward trajectory of how this works. That's not how this is. If one thing is remaining constant, you can't just have the rest of it go up. If Unless you start increasing the prices of games to go with the budget, if your game costs $180 million to make, you got to charge $80, $80 for it, which some get away with it by doing that, by charging $80 for a deluxe edition of basically the same game with extra stuff in it or have fun little physical like, things yeah. or future dlc like i think with borderlands i think with borderlands 3 it was like close to 200 dollars, but you got like the game the season pass and like a, a physical loot box yeah with like just a ton of shit in it yeah i know persona 5 when um if you bought like the deluxe edition for like 90 dollars, they gave you like the actual mask that joker wears yeah. so like so all that, these little extra that's things. kind of how they get around the yes you're paying extra money but something. you still get just the game there's a value yeah you, it's a perceived here's a oh, keychain yeah. for like SpongeBob has a three hundred dollar edition. Yeah, and all I you get about. is <laughs> for fucking what? Well, no, I just thought about it just to say I bought it. Oh god! Just to prove I have money, which I don't. I should not be spending three hundred dollars on Battle a, for Bikini Bottom with just a SpongeBob figurine. Yeah. So the last quote we have from Sean Layden, he says it's been the price of games has been fifty nine ninety nine since I started in this business, which was a long time ago. I think he's been in the business for like 15, 20 years. But the cost of games have gone up 10 times. If you don't have elasticity on the price point, but you have huge volatility on the cost line, the model becomes more difficult. I think this generation is going to see those two imperatives collide. So he's basically saying, we're going to hit that peak. We're going to see that where this doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Games are taking too long to make, too much money to make. You can't make that back. And then our expectations are only going to rise with all the shit they talk about with the new consoles. They're going to be like, hey, these things can do so much. They can't, though. They just do the same things that they've been doing just a little faster, just looks a little bit sharper, I guess. And still, PCs have been doing that for years. So it's, it's you're going to get to the point, which is another discussion, of where consoles and PCs are basically the same. But PCs still probably have like a little bit of an advantage. So it's like, well, what if PCs just become cheaper and people just buy them? And who cares about consoles if you're just doing the same shit? And streaming, if people like Stadia, like Stadia, they'll just 
do state play stadium i haven't touched that thing i tried it a little bit no. but my it my mac got really hot so i was like yeah probably not so people might just go to stadio or x cloud and be like i don't need a console i don't need that all that computing power i don't need any of this crap i'll just buy a digital copy on stadia and then i can just buy games and you don't get the money back for making these consoles then you got to like rely on game revenue which doesn't work well, that's why I think Microsoft is shifting more towards focusing less on console revenue and more on services, services which that's is why probably pushing, the better model. Yeah, they're pushing gold. They're pushing Game Pass. You know, I mean, maybe it wouldn't be too crazy. I mean, I'm not a fucking financial expert by any means. I could barely fucking manage my own goddamn finances. But I mean, maybe it's not too crazy to think that at a certain point, like maybe we don't have that discussion about our game 60, 70 bucks anymore. Like maybe, yeah, it's going to be that price point if you want to keep it. But it can also be just cheaper to per month, know. whatever I mean, like, the look per at, month rate is. Yeah. I mean, like look at Netflix, for example, you pay like what, eight, ten dollars a month. But like those movies that they put on there, you can still go buy that Blu-ray for like, yeah. 20 bucks. And there that seems some... like a crazy amount of money for like go to a Walmart or a Target yeah. and go browse the new movie section. Like DVDs and fucking Blu-rays are still like 20 to 30 bucks yeah. for like a brand new like what just came out just came to blu-ray yeah. you know but we've kind of become so desensitized to those sales like i i don't know the the numbers on on the market revenue in terms of dvd and blu-ray disc sales but i, I can't imagine that they're fucking crushing the digital well, world yeah, especially they're, streaming they're understanding that people are just paying for streaming services so we don't really sell as many because it's like now i don't have to keep that thing in my house well that's why i don't why have most to them, find it i can just but the thing is most of them also push that service where if you do go and buy it physical like i have a coworker that likes to collect a lot of movies but he buys it physical but then he signs up on a, a voodoo account and you get a digital copy and you get a digital copy to keep forever and watch wherever yeah. too which so. that's the thing i guess the streaming services don't have is you don't get to keep them necessarily they're there right. but they will remove they can remove them at any time they can be Correct. like now you don't have access that's why we i can't play yaris stuff. on xbox 360 anymore sorry buddy it was not a good game anyways it was not it's one of the worst games i think of all time it's on it's the list. pretty fucking bad it's pretty bad so he basically says that he would welcome sean laden basically says he would welcome a return to the 12 to 15 hour triple a game which those still exist yeah but that isn't the end all be all of this problem because yes there are companies that keep their development budgets low still make great games still charge full price for them still grow at a pretty nice rate but people still aren't finishing games they don't care that's a personal problem i know but these game developers are spending extra time and money to make sure that the ends and the beginnings are just as riveting the whole game is awesome because you you don't want a game that teeters off towards the end. They're like, wow, the second half really stunk. Or, yeah. or the first half. It's like, well, if the first half's bad, but you spent all your time, energy, and money making the second half good, well, then who's going to get there if the first half is terrible? You need to really like that game or really want to make it to the end. So these games are being made 100%. It's all what we think is good. What we all put our money into is each half is equal. Well, if we go back to the 12 to 15 hour games, I mean that's a weekend yeah. if you can get a weekend free from just social responsibilities and kids and yeah. stuff like you that you can fit it in like imagine you beat the game the wife goes on vacation somewhere and takes the kids or whatever you got a whole weekend to just chill and yeah. play it you know but how pissed would you be if that entire weekend was spent playing a really shitty game i know and then it's i hate seeing this even with tv shows or movies like it really picks up like it picks up around like the second season i'm like so i have to watch a full season to be kind of entertained and then maybe i'll like the second season because like i'm not really getting hooked now well, who's gonna well, say especially for a lot the of those sh- especially for a lot of those shows where the first season itself is like 10 episodes of an hour each yeah so i have to spend half of my day yeah. watching this like i can understand you know with certain games where someone's like, oh, it picks up after like two, three hours. Like I can slog through two, three yeah. hours before something gets good. Yeah. You know, but yeah, like, but I mean, if it's game like, of a, Thrones, if it's a people... 60 hour game and you're like the intro and the beginning quests or the whatever really suck. And yeah. you're like, yeah, it's, it picks up once you get to like level 30. I'm like, that's, I don't have that kind of time, patience, much. energy, whatever the hell. Like that's yeah. stupid. Yeah, I mean, like most Persona games I've played. So I 
obviously play the shit out of five, but I started playing four on my Vita. And even that one was kind of similar where it takes probably, yeah, like two hours almost, maybe even three in some cases where like the story really picks up and gets interesting. Yeah. But like most people, especially if you're into those kinds of games, you can stomach kind of being like, you okay, put up with it. I've yeah. never tried it. I could tolerate two to Let's three see hours. Let's where this goes. Now, yeah. these are games where on average Persona 4, I think, is like 80 to 90 hours to finish. And then Persona 5 is like 100, 110 average. You would not want to pick this game up if I told you. I'm like, oh, it's it takes about like 50 hours. Yep. Halfway through. Yeah. yeah. Picks up. Nobody, like the nobody game, would the, bother. The game runs every day from like early April until like end of March. Once you get to like November, that's when it's like yeah some shit's happening no by the time you hit june you're like i'm fucking done yeah so that's that's why like it makes it depends sense. on the content that's yeah. in there i mean it's not and this isn't just a yeah it's going to fix everything if all games go to 12 to 15 hour triple a titles do that there are, can still be big games like fallout makes it happen all the elder scrolls games are pretty good grand theft autos red dead redemption all of these games that are that's big effect. they make money yeah they make money so they can see how they can just keep going until it stops, which who knows when that is. Whereas if you're a smaller studio, you can't really risk it all the time. You can't just right. be like, yeah, we'll be fine. Even if like we lose a couple people that aren't going to buy this because they don't have the time, energy, money, whatever. We'll be fine. There's not a lot of companies that can do that. So now we're going to mention some stats about games and their completion rates just because it's it's not always that games are too big. That's part of the problem is that these games are, there's too much to do that. It's like, I, it's, it's intimidating. It's I overwhelming. Can't get it done. You get it's disinterested. overwhelming for the average person. If you tell them even a little bit about this game. Yeah. It's, it's like a hundred hour game. Oh, so you mean I actually have to like play it for a hundred hours to like get some kind of like, yes, I feel like this was valuable to me. Holy shit. That's picturing that that's how many days straight of playing the game. I mean, a hundred hours is, really pale in comparison to the months and weeks that you're going to spend just thinking about that cast of characters and how you'd love to live in that world. Very true. You love Persona 5. I love it so fucking much. I I do. do. Would you go back to high school if it was like Persona 5? Mm. Right now. Right now you get to go back to high school. Mm. Do I get to be one of the Phantom Thieves? Or would I just be a regular student? Yes. Then yes. Okay. I would be. But if I was just a regular student, yeah, I'd just, you're just like there. I would be like, wow, there's so much shit. Man, going Joker's on. having fun. What's he doing today? Well, nobody knows that his name is Joker. What? They just think he's just a quiet, I guess, nerd. Fucking no, oh, he's delinquent. A, ah, so he's because he originally he gets bad boy. he gets sent to Tokyo because he got uh, into like a legal trouble. A DUI. No, he like quote unquote hit some dude. Uh, you got to spend a hundred hours to yeah. Fucking you got to sixty hours. You got to figure it out. It's basically the length of high school. I mean, but that was one of those games where, like, it was weird because throughout the 110 hours when I played the vanilla version, I definitely did feel at some parts where I was kind of like, okay, Let's, like, is this, yeah. can we speed this up? But then, like, it was usually almost like every every time I felt like that, it was, like, roughly a half hour later where, like, something would happen in the story that, like... Oh, never mind. Yeah. It immediately this, picked up it. my yeah, interest. So there's definitely a lot of filler, but... it. It's like weird. I saw somebody on Reddit described it perfectly. They were like, yeah, you kind of play through the game. And especially when you've played through it before, you're kind of like, okay, is this over yet? Blah, blah, blah. And then you get to the end and you're like, is there more? I want to play more. Is there yeah. More? It's like, That's I'll never it? get, That's I'll it? never get to experience the feeling of playing it for the first time again. Yeah. So AAA titles take roughly two to three years to make on average. Big yeah. ones likely take longer. Some take like 11 years. I think like Duke Nukem Forever took like 11 years. And that fucking it was bad. Stunk. I think we also have an episode where we talk about if game delays or like longer games, the games that take too long to make, if they're good or if they're bad. A lot of plugs for previous episodes in this one. The average budget of a AAA game is somewhere from 20 million to 60 million. Obviously, bigger games probably cost more to make. And that's minus, you know, marketing costs, distributing costs, all that other stuff. So these games on average about three years about 40 million dollars that's a lot just for what you think is like oh yeah fuck that game i played for like two hours and was bored that took someone three years to make 40 million dollars to make it so it, these are these aren't small fish that they're dealing with these are these are big deals 
This is a lot of money. This is a lot of negotiations, a lot of contracts, a lot of employees, a lot of labor, a lot of just a lot. So it's ridiculous to assume that games are going to have 100% completion rates, that everybody that plays it is going to finish the game. There are some. Yeah. There are some where it's like literally this is impossible to not finish. Some like small Mario Kart. Some small indie games, some games that have no end, that it's just like once you technically win a race, you're done. Like once you win a Grand Prix, I guess, you did Mario Kart. That's why there's credits after you every Grand Prix. Yeah. Because you did it technically, but it's not like an end. And there's games that, like we said before, first person shooters where they are solely multiplayer. There's no end. You just keep playing and keep playing. The end is you realize that you stink and then delete it from your hard drive. That's the end of the game. So it's we're not going to say that it should be 100%. It's not going to be. But if some games are like, 10 percent if 15 percent of people are reaching the end of a game and there's how many hundreds of thousands of people that own this game and have played this game that's not great that's a terrible number and we actually have some numbers from 2019 so granted these probably rose a little bit but not by much and these are only playstation titles which playstation i'd say is the more worldly console anyway so this is probably more of a representative sample because it's playstation people PlayStation 4 owners that have played these games. Red Dead Redemption 2, back in 2019, a couple months after it released, only 22% of people made it to the end, which I guess that's a different example because that is a very long game. Red Dead Redemption 2 is known for having a ton of stuff to do. and a shit ton of stuff It's like Grand Theft Auto. It's like, well, if I'm bored, I'm going to follow traffic and actually like obey the laws. Do something, yeah. If you're in a cowboy game, you're like, oh, I'm just going to hang out and play poker. Or just like, yeah, I'm going to duel this guy just because I don't like him. Next one is Spider-Man. 50% of people finished Spider-Man. Hmm. I'm not one of those 50%. I still need to finish it. Well, you are 50%. You're just I, the other the 50% one. That I'm didn't the, finish. It's 50.3. So I am the 49.7 who did not finish it. Wow. Which Spider-Man was like a 15-hour game. It's not a super long game. I probably spent close to 30 hours just web slinging. But honestly. if you're collecting all this stuff, I mean, like finishing the story to where it's like, okay, now you're. Oh, collecting yeah. Like if you're just New York. booking through the story yeah. front to back. Yeah, that's like 15 hours. 15 hours. And only half the people got that far. God of War, 53%. I haven't finished God of War. I'm terrible at finishing I haven't even games. started it. So. so 53% played finished God of War. And that's pretty linear. It's not like you're doing a bunch of, you know, extra stuff. There's some collecting, there's some like lore searching and stuff, but it's pretty linear. Far Cry 5. Kind, I finished that. You finished that. Mm -hmm. Kind of open worldy, but there is a limit on what you can do. You can actually finish that game in like 10 minutes. Really? Mm -hmm. Right at the beginning of the game, um, when you meet Joseph Seed, you can actually choose to not arrest him and walk away. And then that ends the it's game. Over. That's dope. That's one That's of the stupid, secret endings. But kind of dope too. Yep. 35.8% people finished Far Cry 5. Grant, add like a couple percentage points. That was the only days. Far Cry game I played and I had a blast. Far Cry 3 is one. I heard, I heard good things it. about 4 especially too. Dead Cells, 15%. Which that is a side scroller. It's a Metroidvania. Yep. Yeah. How complex, how intricate can it really be if it's just a side scroller? Pretty. Pretty, but I'm just saying. It's not an like open world side scroller. It's... It's open world in a sense. Kind of. But I'm saying there's there are limits to how big these games can be. And it's like Spider-Man, 15-hour game. Do it or don't. This game, finish it or don't. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 24.6%. That's a bigger game. I get that. But Assassin's Creed is still kind of like follow the linear story, do the things. Don't. There's only so much like side quests or distractions that you can have, like say in a fallout open world mmo whatever persona 5 34.8 percent amar is one of those percentages i'm actually twice both. over yeah i've beaten it twice yeah i've also watched the animation which is basically like if you don't have the time to invest in the game you can yeah. just watch the watch anime the, yeah which is just Same the thing. story of the game so like does that count that i beat it three times then we'll give it to you three percent so that's 34.8% of people, which that's a big game. That is a long game. A big game. That one, though, I mean, yeah, I mean, still, even if you were to like 
skip through most of the filler stuff. A lot of the filler stuff in that game and the reason why it takes so long is because there's so much shit to do. Yeah. Um, so like in the original, I beat it in 110 hours. The royal version with adding the new semester and then adding uh, the new area of Kichijoji where you can like hang out, you can play darts, you can play billiards with your you know group of friends. The billiards is just like a little, quick little cut scene and you know, they're just kind of like, haha, we're hanging out. The darts is like an actual like you can actually fucking play. Yeah. And I finished that with like 150 hours. I think darts alone, I probably spent like a good 20 hours just playing darts with the fan of these. Because I had nothing else to do. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to hang out with the crew. Like I wanted to spend more time with these characters. But if you just wanted to just plow through the main story, you didn't really care about, you know, learning each confidant's like little things and learning their backstories. You could probably finish it in like 85 to 90 hours. But even still, that's a a pretty huge time sink if that's not something that interests you. Yeah. So... I mean, these are the co-worker that actually recommended the game to me. I don't even think you would fucking finish the game. Yeah, there. Are, it makes sense that you that kind of fits the model of it's a big game. Not everybody's going to finish it. Right. There's something's going to happen. They're going to get bored. They're going to get tired. They don't have enough time. They don't have whatever. It gets good at 40 hours. Yeah. That was one of those games that kind of proves, hey, this game's way too big. You spent way too much money on it. But I'm assuming that they a lot of people like it, that they bought it. And it's kind of keeps you moving. It's a different example because that's probably more of a world title than it's probably. I don't know how well it sells in the U.S. Surprisingly, five has sold very, very well in the U.S. Well, then never mind. I mean, a lot of those Japanese role playing games are kind of slowly starting to, you know, break into the Western market and become like Dragon Quest is becoming a little bit more popular here. Same with the Final Fantasy series. Yeah. Persona is another one, too. Mm -hmm. So Yakuza Kiwami 2. 49.1%. 49.1%. And these are all percentages of people that have played the game. Obviously, I have never I played... actually start that game. I've never played Yakuza Kiwami 2, so I'm not going to be part of that percentage. Is, is that on Game Pass? I know there's I two of them. I think so, or it's Yakuza 0. I'm not sure. I know Yakuza 0 is on there, and I think just Kiwami. I Yakuza. That's probably wrong. I'm sorry. Yakuza. That, we'll go with that. This typical triad. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, I think Kiwami 2 is supposed to come on Game Pass later this year, but it's not there yet. I think it goes zero. Kiwami, Kiwami 2. Something like that. I think that's... Which, I think they are releasing it in the chronological order of like the events in the game. Which Access, which I'll bring up later, is also contributes to this. Access to the game. Yeah. If you get a game where tons of people have access to it, the number might go down just yeah. because that's so many more people. If it's a smaller niche where a lot of these people are diehard fans that they want to play the whole entire game front to back, the numbers will probably look a little bit better. That's just how it works. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, 41.7% in what is lauded as a very good game. Yeah. 41% of people that turned it on and played it made it to the end. Well, and yeah, when you're adding it to like services like Game Pass, it's like, I mean, a Monster Hunter World, I literally downloaded it, played it, and yeah. I was like, eh, not my cup of tea. Put it down. Detroit Become Human, 61.7%. That's pretty high. Really? Yeah. But I think it's just because I didn't play it. I don't, don't know anybody that played it. It's kind of a niche title. It's supposed to... Wasn't it free on PS Plus one month? I think so. And I think, yeah, it was I remember free. being kind of excited this for the game and I stopped giving a shit. This was back in 2019. So that number when probably went out? down when more people had it. I think last year. Two years ago. Really? Something like that. I, like I said, I remember being very excited for that game and, and wanting to know more about it. And then I just kind of fell off and yeah. stopped giving a shit. I think that's one of the examples of like, there are a lot of people that don't play this game, don't know about this game. The people that do play a lot of it, or it's it's pretty linear, I'm assuming. It looked interesting. It's like robot police or something like that. A world of robots. Darksiders 3, 37.9%. That's pretty linear, but it's puzzles and stuff and combat. So it makes sense that people probably get tired or don't care. Crash Bandicoot, 12.6%. I am one of those 12.6%. Is that just for like the new games? That's the Insane Trilogy, which I think just first Crash Bandicoot. I, I feel like all the old ones of the original PlayStation days. Like 1, 2, and Warped? Yeah, if you didn't finish those as a kid. You're not going to finish them as an adult. What kind of childhood you have? I mean, Spyro is probably also pretty low too. Yes. When you have that big of a collection though. I mean, it, these games are also made to be challenging. Oh, which Crash is, which I'm going to bring up fucking harder. Which I'm going to bring up later. That adds to it where people get fed up or they're like, 
I bought it for another reason. I bought it for nostalgia purposes. I didn't feel like actually like putting time into it. I did that with Crash Team Racing. I bought it just because of the nostalgia factor. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, I love this game as a kid. I'm going to buy it. And then I played it for like a day, which is bad. I should be playing it. But it's just like, yeah. that's that's why I bought it. I'm assuming a lot of people bought Battle for Bikini Bottom. It's a relatively easy game, but I'm assuming that a lot of people haven't finished it just because they're like, I bought it because I enjoyed the game back in 2003 when it came out. Yeah. They just had, I want to have this and they're cheaper so people can buy it. So those are the numbers we have. Those are obviously PlayStation 4 titles. There are probably a lot of old games that you could easily, if you have a console, can check out Xbox achievements, PlayStation trophies, Steam achievements, whatever. And you can check the numbers and say, okay, this game that is supposedly a huge game, the last campaign or last chapter or whatever trophy or achievement that's there that's like beat the game on any difficulty or whatever, you can actually check how many people have played that game and how many have not just take the inverse and if you're one of them be proud because most people don't finish games which is what those statistics kind of show so now we're going to get to talking about why some people don't finish games because there are some other reasons besides them being too long too big too in-depth too much stuff to do that is part of it but there's another part which is not necessarily the game's fault so it's kind of like yes your games are big your games are long your games cost a lot of money to make and they're only getting bigger, only costing more money. And then we're going to have to pay $70 for it. But it's not all it's like, well, it's not always our fault that you didn't finish this game. Finish the game. It's especially with like Spider-Man. It's 15 hours. Finish it. So first reason and probably a big one, time. People are running out of time. They have so much stuff to do, whether they have kids, school, work, responsibilities, obligations, whatever, injury. You don't have any time. So all of these games that take even 15 hours, it's hard to split 15 hours into, okay, well, I have about an hour a day-ish to play video games. That's 15 days. That's two weeks. And you have to hope nothing happens. You have to hope that that's consistent. It probably won't be. Or you might get distracted. And that's like, I have to play video games for an hour a day for 15 days. Not everybody can do that. Right. Not everybody wants to do that. People are like, well, I don't really feel like playing video games today. I feel like going for a walk. I feel like reading a book. I feel like doing something else. <laughs> I said read a book. That's a joke. Hmm. As is it you a get, book about video games? <laughs> is it a video game, a book made into a video game? As you get older, it is hard to find time for gaming as well. We are finding that out the hard way. Yeah. Obviously, in a pandemic, we have a couple more hours set aside for video games because we are putting that time aside. We are like, I want to play video games today. Yes, I am playing this game. I am playing Doom Eternal right now because I was like, you know what? I bought it. I really want to play it. I have no excuse not to. I have tons of time and I love it. It's fucking great. So you might not even have time to finish a shorter game. That's how it works sometimes. And it's not the game developer's fault. They can make a two hour game and some people might not even finish it just because they're like, I had only a half an hour to play and then I other something came up. I had a kid. He had to go to the hospital. I had, my mom needed something, all this other stuff. And some people like myself have a want to get lost mindset. It's like, you know what? I, when I pick up this game and when I start playing it, I don't want to have to put it down in a half hour. I don't want to be like, you know what? I got stuff to do in two hours and this game's going to take 60 hours to do anything, to experience the full game. I'm like, well, I just canceled my plans. I'm not even, I, yes, you can do that. I can't do that. I mean, what do you go to a bar? Yeah. I got an adventure waiting for me at home. Traveling hang out world. with people? You mean hang out in this awesome so we, fantasy world and we just, gonna just drink beer and stare at our phones? Or can I just stay at home and drink beer and stare at my screen and go on a magical journey? And like level up like four times. I could have leveled right. up in this conversation we're having. So people like me and probably more too, and you maybe want to get lost. You want to have the time, have it be a time suck. You don't want it to be a time suck and literally make time fly by when you only have an hour of which to fly by. Right. So that's why people just like, you know what? I'm not, I have done this myself. I'm not going to pick it up. The Witcher 3, it's great. I've played a little bit of it, but then when I try to pick it up again, I'm like, yes, but this is a very intricate game, very story based, very quest, side quest, very looter, whatever. 
I don't want to just play it for an hour and then do minimal things. Yeah, and like then you just want to like, feel well, like you're making that progress. Was stupid. Why did I pick that up? Or like I I can maybe get half a level in World of Warcraft in like 45 minutes. So it's like, well, why? You're not just leveling efficiently, then that's your problem. Well, yeah, I know. Well, I'm, I'm too busy farming mining. <laughs> you're too busy farming gold. I'm trying to get all that money. Another the reason internet money. is people play repetitive games that don't necessarily have an end, which is what I was mentioning earlier. They People like to play with friends. They like to play competitively. They yep. like to just have a mindless, this is repetitive. You're going to do the same thing over and over again. You're going to drop down, pick up a weapon, find a chest, and then you're going to get shot in the back of the head and just be like, well, that was fun. That wasn't. This episode brought to you by Hyperspace. Fortnite is very stupid. They do not... We don't have a sponsor for this, but hey, if you want to, that's fine. I don't want to be sponsored by Battle Royale game. We won't complain. Unless we'll, we'll be grudging. Unless if to win that sponsorship, it's like a last podcast standing. I actually want them to do a Battle Royale Battle Royale. Like they bring each game and just like, yep, you need to win every single game. And then the last person oh, standing is the Battle Royale champion. Oof. You have to win every single Battle Royale that is out there. But there's only like five. So you but are you like representing a Battle Royale? You can. There's like only the, five. The, the best there's so many more the than five. The best people have to win a Battle Royale in their game. And then all four or five of those go into a separate Battle Royale. Do you know there's more than five Battle Royale games, right? Yeah, there's like 10 or whatever. Somebody made like a top 20 list. I was like, there's 20? Jesus Christ. That's too many. There's like the calling. There's Cuisine Royale. Hell yeah. I want to go, know what I that's go all pro about. and Forza Cuisine Eliminator Royale. technically counts as a Battle Royale. Yeah. Blackout is still a thing. That makes sense. Warzone is a thing. That makes sense. I guess there's now like Ubisoft has hyperspace, I think is what it's called. Yeah. There's too many. Fortnite. So you have your Fortnites, you have your Apex, you have WoW, CSGO, Valorant, League of Legends, Call of Duty, all of these games that don't have an end. It's just you play them. And then when you're done, you're done. It's not like we can track that you completed the game. You know, people buy them for that reason. And there's no campaign. And some people buy games with no campaign, like Black Ops 4. They, there's no end to that. You just play it and then you're done. So there's not really a way to measure. Next one is new games are coming out all the time. We have a very short attention span because we are dumb human beings. We are dumb. I feel like you say that once a week. Yes, because we are stupid sacks of water. Wear a mask, by the way. We are stupid. Nah. <laughs> we are stupid. So... We're always looking for the shiny new toy that's being waved at us, which is every single game that comes out every week. There's a new game coming out every like two weeks or something. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd be listening to this podcast and thinking you're talking about squirrels. Probably. That's, that's we weren't talking about squirrels. Oh, well, never mind. I guess I don't know any better. So we get distracted by the next thing. I've done that. I've been like, I bought a game and then played it for a little bit. I'm like, oh, but, but I bought this one too. I'm going to play this one. This is new. This is newer. This new game is coming out because it's a fear of missing out. You don't want to be the one guy that didn't play. Or you're just enjoying a game you played before, so you keep going back to it. Yes, or you keep playing Dragon Age and Mass Effect for this 17th time. Yep. Sorry. I mean, if the game is good, it's like, fuck it. Why not? True. Like, and Why wouldn't I want to go back and, and play this yes, again? Which it's sad that saying that a new game is like, yeah, but it's not this game I played back in 2011. Right. I mean, I was having fun with Borderlands 3, but then Borderlands Game of the Year Edition was on yeah, sale was for like, 12 hey, bucks. And I was like, oh, why not? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. So it's not our fault. That's just our hardware. We like something new flashy something that's oh i've never played that before oh only a few people have played that before oh everybody's watching it on twitch oh it's a new game that i've heard about a lot i'm gonna play it forget that thing i was in the middle of who cares i got the new thing i got the new hot model i'm gonna play that so that's another reason it's rare to find someone who only plays like one game and that's it and then they just beat it and then they move on to the next game it's rare to find that nowadays whereas back in the day you only had a couple games you couldn't just buy a bunch and then have access to a soft a streaming service that's like, here's 20 games. Here's 150. Here's 300 from Game Pass. Why not? That's, you know, there are now more games than ever, which is a stupid statement. But there are more games than there ever have been. And it's tough to just stick to one because we are. 
dumb human beings. The next one is the game might be too difficult. It might be too hard. It literally might be, okay, I want to finish this. I can't. It is impossible for me to do that without some kind of divine intervention, some kind of just me gluing my eyes to a guidebook or having my older brother do it. Remember those back in the day where it's like you give it to a friend. It's like, hey, I beat this. Okay, cool. Can you read it for me? I can't do this. So now games like Souls games, Ninja Gaiden, Super Meat Boy, Cuphead, all these games that literally are advertised as being a difficult game. It's like, yeah, you know what it is. It's super difficult. Come play it. You won't finish it. Those kind of damper completion rates because people can't get that far. They're not that good. I'm not a pro. You know, some games are made that way. You can't do anything about them except play them. So what do you want? The next reason is people are watching gameplay more than ever before as well, which takes if you're watching gameplay, you can't necessarily be playing the game as well, unless you're Superman and can just be watching a Twitch stream of a game and then playing the game that the Twitch stream is playing. That's impressive. Kind of stupid, but it's impressive. So there are walkthroughs, let's plays, whatever on YouTube now where you can just watch a video of a story and they kind of just go through it pretty quickly. And just be like, hey, this is the story. Here, I just cut up the parts, cut up the highlights that matter, probably a little bit of commentary, and that's it. So you can get a whole walkthrough. My brother does this. My brother doesn't like to play video games. He just likes to watch the playthroughs that other people do. So instead of like playing games, he's like, yeah, that game looks really cool. I'm going to watch somebody yeah. play it on YouTube. It's like watching TV. Yeah. yeah. He'd rather watch it than do it. So that was, was always weird to me when I was a kid. I used to have friends that... Um were like cool with just watching me play yeah like, i was never like that i, I always felt play. rude i felt rude, i felt rude, rude yeah, yeah but like i want to play yeah, i don't want to watch someone play but as i grow older i am finding myself kind of more like some games if i want to kind of gauge my interest like oh is this something i'd like then i'll watch a playthrough yeah. or if i really like stuck on something or yeah. it's like oh i want to see or if I really, really like to game, like, at, like yeah. the other day at work, I was watching someone just playing Fallout 3. I was like, I've beaten this game 100 times over, but like, I want to watch something. Fuck yeah. it. I want to watch Without having to go f- home, boot it up, spend all this yeah, time, I'm just start watch it over. somebody play yeah. Fallout 3, which that's more accessible than ever before. You can just download the Twitch app on your phone and have access to millions of people that are playing the games that you want to watch. So people aren't playing games like that. They're watching them now. That's just, you know, you can get. The ending, get the satisfaction of watching the story and getting the entire narrative without spending the entire 15 hours. You can probably do it, watch a couple videos and be done in an afternoon. The last reason, which I just put in there, your game might actually suck. And Fair. it doesn't doesn't merit anybody finishing the game. If it's bad, people aren't going to play it. They're not going to finish it. That's just... Your game could be short. It could be long. If it's terrible, people aren't going to finish it. It's just... it's. It's either just a very short, terrible experience or a very long, terrible Unless experience. Unless you're a Mar, and then you want the achievements. Mm. Then you will get someone who finishes it. Mm. There are some games you have played that are bad, but you got the achievements. Yeah, but those ones, those were quick achievements. You get the short, bad ones. Correct. Not the long, bad ones. Long, I can't bad do ones. The long, bad ones. Yeah, long, I bad can't. ones are tough. But there are people who do finish them. Bless you for doing that. You are. <laughs> You have more patience than we do, but if your game sucks, no one's going to finish it. Anyway, if your game sucks, a good way to make sure that your game doesn't totally suck is just add an easy achievement or trophy list. There you go. Then people will, people like Amar will finish that in a heartbeat. Yeah, then at that point, I'm like, yeah, it wasn't the best game I played, but it wasn't that hard. A thousand out of it, so it wasn't that hard. I got my money's worth. Yeah. There was one, it was a visual novel game that. I don't mind visual novels. Yeah. If it's good, if I like if the story, yeah. if yeah. the story, if I care about it at all. This one literally to get the the thousand was just pressing A for twenty five minutes. Jesus Christ! Because you're just reading. Yeah. Um, I, I wants to read. Well, I started reading through it and I was like, eh, yeah, I just wasn't interested. So, so you I just blindly, blindly pressed A. Press a yeah, uh, I was fall, just falling asleep a. or have like that uh, like water thing that that dips in the yep that dips its beak in the water. Just have it keep pressing A. Like, for don't you. get me like, wrong. If it was an actual intriguing visual yeah. novel, I would have actually legitimately sat through and read it all. But yeah. 
it was yeah, one of those where it's like it, it gets going in the first oh uh, no nah, i was like if, if you didn't hook me in the first five minutes the ending so. is really good i'm like oh, so what's all the rest of it is the rest of it bad but the ending's good i'm gonna play through this for 12 hours and then the end i just clicked good. a for 25 minutes and my thumbs were sore for about a week but you got like a swole thumb though i alternated like, so that i wouldn't want to fight you in a thumb war man no no you like, wouldn't as fuck visual novels baby yeah that's that's the new thumb exercise visual novel so at the end now we're just going to talk about our thoughts about if games are getting too big and kind of what we do we are obviously two people two gamers we are not your average person we're not you know we don't speak for everybody we don't have the opinions that probably are shared by other people but we are two different gaming personalities so i love longer games because I am a huge RPG fan. It's just I love having things with tons of lore, tons of quests, tons of stuff to do. Why do I care about this guy? I don't even know him. I just met him five minutes ago, but I want to know everything about him. I want to know where he goes. I want to know what I can do with him. I want to just do all the quests about him. I don't even care. Like, I forgot his name. I don't even care. I want to go. I'm going to go do whatever I can. I want to go discover this area that just, yeah, you can walk here. They told you, they just, yeah, they put it so you can walk here. I'm going to go walk over there. I'm going to go find this thing. I'm going to go find this buried treasure or whatever because I can. Linear games, they're cool, but they kind of are like, well, once you get it on the way, you can kind of see where it's going. They become a little predictable because it's like this is, you know, point A to point B is this. Oh, your character lost a little bit. Oh, then they're coming back. It's a revenge narrative. You win get the girl, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of dig longer games. But like I said earlier, I'm kind of hesitant to pick them up if I don't think I'm going to have the time to play them. I was like, man, I really want to play Dragon Age Inquisition to finish off the Dragon Ages. But I'm like, this is going to take 30 hours, maybe, maybe like 40 to do. And then I'm going to have to do it again to get the 1,000 gamer score. I did it. But I was like, this is way too much I don't have time for this. I'm going to have to make it a point to play this game for like a couple hours a day for the next how many days in order to get it done with. And I did, and it was a grind, which some people love the grind, some people don't. So these games are long, but I'm like, okay, I got to be in the right mindset. I got to be in the right environment. I got to be in the right, I want to play this. I'm going to get sucked in for a couple hours and then just like, oh shit, it's like 1.30 in the morning. I should turn this off and get ready for work tomorrow. Like, that's just who I am as a person. And I also don't want to get into a story and then forget what happened. So I'm like... So then finish the game, you well, coward. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, longer games, it's kind of tough that way. Where it's like, this is one small, like, minute. You played for four hours. In that universe, in that game's universe, that's like five minutes of time has passed. That's why I like Dragon Quest XI because if you don't play it for a while, when you go back into the game, like every time that you boot up the game, it'll give you like a little kind of, this is what happened like a recap? recently. Yeah, like a recap oh, of like the last like few hours. I appreciate that, yeah. yeah. I would love that if it was like, hey. I here's... haven't fucking played the game in like two years and I got halfway through it, but. Here's what you did. Here's what yep. happened. Here's probably the last like couple quests you did. Here's Here's where your progress is on this one. Here's the menu to fucking figure out all the buttons uh, again here's here's what all these things do hop back here's how it. it's different than this other game that you probably have been playing because like going from like shooter to shooter i'm like fuck what is this pick do? up dragon quest for the switch i have yeah. it on the playstation but i've been trying to pick up more rpgs for the switch where i can play both tv and yeah that's i mean that's gonna help if it's like you can take it on the road then you can just be like yeah i got an hour lunch break i want to play but for me story related games are supposed to suck you in and if these triple a titles are getting too big like last of us Part two, if I heard it's 25 hours, I'm not that invested into it. I'm not going to be like, oh, God, 25 hours I have to play this game to get to the ending, which is probably going to be its main selling point is that this ending takes some kind of twist or some shit or how they get out of the situation with the zombies. I don't know. It's kind of like turning me off on it. I'm like, eh, 25 hours, 60 bucks for a game that it's like I'm going to see the ending probably in Twitter or on YouTube or like in some kind of gaming article anyway. I'm like, eh, why am I bothering? So I like longer games if I know I'm going to play them or if it's if it is a time suck and I have the time to get sucked in. So we 
Amar and I don't personally have to deal with the financial facets of the gaming industry, but games getting bigger, taking longer, and costing more do affect the future opportunities we have to get games from studios that we like, good games, at a decent rate. So we don't really have, we're not affected by, well, our bottom line matters. Our, we're going to preface this, well, it's not a preface because it's the end, but we understand that our role in this is kind of minimal. If games are too long, if they're too short, if there's too much to do, if there's not enough to do, it doesn't matter. Everybody also has their own preference too. There are some people who like less stuff to do. They like linear games because they're just like, I don't have that much patience. I don't have that kind of attention span. I just want to get through it and then get done and then buy another one and then get on, move on to the next game. So it's there are to each their own. I like long games. I also appreciate short games. I need to play more indies because I've been only sticking with triple A's, which I need to stick to indies or give indies a little bit more credit because they make games too. There are some indie games that are like, that's a satisfying 10 hours. There are also some games that it's like, you know what? I'll put some time aside. I really want to play this. Witcher 3 is a good example. I should. I'm like, you know what? This weekend, I'm going to play it. I'm going to choose it as my game to play for that weekend instead of playing some like Call of Duty Warzone again or playing Dragon Age again or just like, hey, I've been playing Solitaire a lot for some reason. <laughs> just because I got a new computer, I'm like, yeah, Solitaire is cool. And you can get achievements for it. I was like, fuck it. Why not? So I'm playing Solitaire and I'm like, I should not be doing this. I have how many games on this small little box next to my computer monitor that has literally enough computing power to give me entertainment for the next month and a half. And I don't. I play Solitaire. So I'm bad. I realize that I am a problem. I am what's wrong with gaming. But in my opinion, I don't see long games really. I only see a couple surviving, and those are the games that have reputations of being good long games that make money. That's it. I don't think that's a, I think it's a model for some, but they're exceptions rather than the rule. So, Amar, how do you feel about long games, short games? If it's worth my time, it's worth my time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> else to it. Went on a long it. diatribe. You're like, it's worth. Yeah, I was, I was just letting you ramble, honestly, because I was like, hey, he's just, he's going. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, like, if if it's worth my time, it's worth my time. I, I can spend a hundred hours playing a Persona game and never get bored of it. And but, play it again. Yeah, but I can also play Call of Duty for twenty minutes and be like, I don't ever want to fucking see the light of day with this game again. Yeah, that's true. So, there are some games where it's it's short. It's personal preference. It's short, and I don't care. It's like, yeah, I don't really give a shit. Like, I'll put it down after I'll an play hour. through the Gears of War campaigns before I play through any of the Call of Duty campaigns. Yeah. And they're about the same length. Yeah. So. I think Call of Duty is even shorter. You can get Call of Duty done in depending. like an afternoon if you got enough time. Same with Gears. Really? Yeah, if you play it on easy difficulty. Well, yeah. But they all are like that if you play it on I easy guess, difficulty. I guess, yeah, if you play anything on easy difficulty, it's pretty short. So we don't have the answers, obviously, to everything. We don't. There are obviously going to be studios that do make money making big games but as an overall statement i'd like to agree and say that maybe we should make smaller games maybe we should not always reach for hey how can we make this the biggest game because people are equating big and depth and stuff to do and they're like well this is a 200 million dollar budget it's going to be one of the greatest games ever that doesn't always work out you cannot you can't always just have the well the biggest budget equals the better game that doesn't work that way so it's you got to fine tune the math and fine tune the science and make it okay this is achievable growth not just well we hit lightning in a bottle got one of the biggest games of all time people are buying it in dozens and now we can just continue doing that sometimes lightning in a bottle it's not going to strike twice somebody put that on a t-shirt I don't know, don't put it on a t-shirt, put it in like a history book or something. But continue making games. We'll continue playing them. If they're $70, we'll buy them begrudgingly. You can have 10 extra dollars. That's fine. I've got dozens of dollars. I can afford it I, for now. So we appreciate you guys listening. Let us know your opinions on longer or shorter games on our Twitter, at BCG Podcast. And give us a review and a rating, five stars. And say we're cool and sound handsome. Five out of a hundred. If it's five out of a hundred, that's fine. As long as you click, that's what that means. Click the five. That's it's out of a hundred. That's what that means. So we appreciate you guys listening. 
go play some games. Go play long ones if you got time. Play short ones if you don't. There's a game for everybody. We just hope that these studios aren't going under because they're this setting a long outro. Yes. God damn, is this worth sixty bucks? Yes. Sometimes outros. Are, and now we're going to talk about if outros oh, are getting fuck short. me. So we appreciate you guys listening. Have a good one. See you next week. Later.